Mr Mayor, the council meeting is being recorded in accordance with council's webcasting of council's meetings policy. The recording will be archived and made available for viewing at any time on council's YouTube channel for a minimum period of 12 months. All care is taken to maintain your privacy. However, if you are in attendance in the public gallery, you should be aware that your presence may be recorded. Your continued attendance means that you agree to being recorded and also that you will abide by the council's adopted code of meeting practice. The chairperson or general manager have the discretion to interrupt the recording of any meeting at any time should it be deemed necessary. This may occur in circumstances where commentary is considered to be misleading, defamatory or inappropriate to be published or where behaviour breaches council's adopted code of meeting practice. Thank you, Mr. GM. Uh, move to prayer and acknowledgement of the country. Could I ask all who are able to, to please stand for the prayer and acknowledgement of country. Almighty God, give wisdom to those in authority and guide all peoples in the way of righteousness and peace, so that we may share with justice the resources of the earth, work together in trust and seek the common good. Amen. I'd like to acknowledge that this meeting is being held on the traditional lands of the Rajri people and recognise the strength, resilience and capacities of the Aboriginal people in this land. You may all be seated. General Manager, are there any apologies or approvals required for attendance for the audio visual link? Mr Mayor, there are no requirements. Thank you, Mr General Manager. Item 6, that the minutes of the ordinary meeting of Baptist Regional Council held on the 15th of February 2023 be adopted. Councillors could have movement and second note. Councillor Auburn, Councillor Smith, Councillors, any discussion? Council now put the motion, those four against, carried. On term 7.1, declaration of interest, General Manager, do we have any declaration of interest? Mr Mayor, I have one declaration of interest by Councillor Smith in item 12.1.4 of the Director of Corporate Services and Finances Confidential Reports. Thank you, Mr. General Manager. Councillor can have a move and a seconder. Councillor Fry, Councillor Burke, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion, those four against, carry. Councillor, we now move to the Director of Environment, Planning and Building Services Report. Item 8.1.1, Section 4.15 of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. 1979. Councillors can have a move and a seconder. Councillor Fry, Councillor Hogan. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor now put the motion. Those four against? Carry. Item 8.1.2, general report. Councillor can have a move and a seconder. Councillor Hogan, Councillor Berg. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor now put the motion. Those four against? Carry. Item 8.1.3, Development Application 2022-519, Proposed Single Dwelling, Lot 3, DP 1259811, Maxwell Drive, Lot 21, DP 1215818, Hamilton Street, Eglinton, Applicant J. Gulliver, Owner J. Gulliver, Councillor can have a move and a seconder. Councillor Auburn, Councillor Jennings, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Jennings. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just a very quick question, really. Um, I'm just wondering if the Director could characterise in any way, shape or form the likelihood that concurrence is granted by the State Government. Um, it seems to me like a, a, a good option, what's uh, being proposed here. It seems a better use of the land, safer use of the land, and um, just curious if there's any expectation as to you know, the, the challenges of going through that State process. Yes, sir, uh, through you, Mr Mayor, no uh, specific um, uh, suggestion that the Department would, would not um, seriously consider the recommendation of the resolution of Council. Uh, the resolution of Council uh, will carry some weight in their opinion, uh, but of course these things are not certain until, until the decision is made. Thank you, Mr Director. Any further discussion? Council now put the motion. We need a division. Those four against carry. Item 8.1.4, Plan Proposal, Baptist Regional Local Environmental Plan 2014 Amendment, Schedule 5, Environmental Heritage. Councillor can have a move and a seconder. Councillor... Oh, sorry, Councillor North. <laughs> Councillor Burke. 
cancel any discussion. Okay. Council now put the motion, those four, against, carried. Item 8.1.5, naming of public roads, Boudet Grove. Councillors can have a mover and a second that. Councillor North, Councillor Burke. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor now put the motion, those four, against, carried. Move to item 8.1.6, Town of Communications and Radio Communications Policies. Councillor can have a move and a seconder. Councillor Jennings, Councillor Hogan. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor now put the motion, those four, against, carried. Councillor, we now move to the Director of Corporate Services and Finances report. Councillor can have a move and a seconder. Councillor Burke, Councillor Smith. Councillor, any discussion? Councillors, I now put the motion, those four, against, carried. Item 8.2.2, .2, monthly review, 2022 to 2026, delivery plan and operational plan, 2022-2023. Councillor can have a move and a second. Huh? Councillor Smith, Councillor Hogan, Councillors, any discussion? Councillors, I now put the motion, those four, against, carried. Item 8.2.3, Sundry Section 356 Donations, Bathurst Memorial Entertainment Centre, Community Use Subsidy and Mount Panorama Fee Subsidy. Councillor have a move and a seconder. Councillor Fry, Councillor Smith. Councillors, any discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion, those four. Against, carried. Item 8.2.4, Power of Attorney. Councillor can have a move and a seconder. Councillor North, Councillor Hogan. Councillors, any discussion? Councillors, now put the motion. Those four against carry. Item 8.2.5, Council Policy Review. Policies reviewed with no or minimal charges identified. Councillors can have a move and a seconder. Councillor Hogan, Councillor Smith. Councillors, any discussion? Councillors, now put the motion. Those four. Those four against Carried. Item 8.2.6, request for financial assistance, grip leadership. Councillors can have a move and a seconder. Councillor North, Councillor Burke, Councillors, any discussion? Councillors, I now put the motion, those four. Against, carried. Item 8.2.7, community lease agreement, lot A and lot C, DP 157645. Known as Five Church Lane, Kelso. Can I, Councillor have a move in a second? Councillor Fry, Councillor Hanger, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Fry. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a question. Um, back in September, we actually, um, I think Councillor Jennings from memory referred this one, uh, pending some information. We've got some of the information there, but we did ask for a, a proper market value commercial property value be ascertained. Um, can I just ask if that was forthcoming? Director? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, we didn't go down the path of getting an independent valuation. Uh, however, we have gone down the path of comparing the site to possible uses based on adjoining um, valuations in that space, only from the purpose of the rental. As detailed in the report, um, the property is not worth much if it was to be sold. Councillor Fry. Thanks, Director. Um, and we also asked that we could get some kind of statement or letter or something from the community group in question just as a form of governance i suppose or good governance good decision making um around why these community groups are asking for for you know zero dollars on basically rent uh, or severe reductions in rent uh, we need to be making sure as councillors that these community groups are doing what they're saying they're doing and that they are financial all that sort of stuff um and one would think that you know, they struggle because they're asking for this discount. Um, how did the team go in uh, getting that statement from uh, this particular organisation? Mr Director. Um, through you, Mr Mayor, they're actually not seeking a discount, just to clarify that. Um, they're actually being, the, the, the fee that we're pr proposing to charge is consistent with other community licences that we enter into. Uh, that being said though, um, a phone conversation was held with the tenant um, we asked them for details around, uh, in line of the question that was raised at the September meeting, around the other users of that particular group. 
uh, sorry, of that facility, being the community garden. Um, and it's noted in the report that they quoted that the Uniting Care and Corinne School were two uh, community organisations that frequent that particular facility. Uh, they also made a generalised comment that just general other members of the community actually use the gardening uh, as well. Thank you, Mr. Director. Thanks. Fry. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, look, I, I'm fine to take that on face value this time, but when we ask for more information, uh, I'd prefer it in report form um, with the rest of the report. That'd be great in the future. Um, I totally get if those, um, and I, again, take it on face value that those groups, very uh, cherished community groups in the community, actually use that particular facility. Um, I just feel like councils need to know exactly what's going on at these places um, that we are, and, and I get your point about not being a discount, but I mean, compared to what we may get without an actual market value from the professional, uh, we don't know what we're missing out on in terms of lease agreements. So I'd just like us to, to make more robust decisions and robust reporting in the future. That's all right. Thanks, Mr. Thank you, Councillor Fry. Any further discussion? Councillor, now put the motion, those four against. Carry. Move to item 8.2.8, .8, new policy hardship rate relief. Councillor can have a move in a second. Councillor Hanger, Councillor Smith, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, now put the motion, those four. Against. Carry. Councillor, we now move to the Director of Engineering Services report, item 8.3.1, potential transfer of Crown Public Road to Council. 4087 Safala Road, Wattle Flat. Councillors can have a move and a second. Councillor, Hang uh, Councillor Hogan and Councillor Smith. Councillors, any discussion? Councillors, I now put the motion. Those four against carried. Move to item 8.3.2, potential transfer of Crown Public Road to Council, 3,725 3, Safala Road, Waddle Flat. Council can have a move in a second. Council Burke, Council Fry. Council, has any discussion? Council Burke. In light of public question time and the questions that we were asked, um, with the DA contributions, when... Um, they are stated that they're used in that vicinity and in this case it's not right. Is there a part of the Act that we refer to and where does that money actually go? Councillor Adams, Mr Director. Through you, Mr Mayor, I uh, uh, might respond in regard to the way the contributions plan is structured and then perhaps uh, defer to Director of Engineering for details about particular roads. So the Section 711 refers to that, that section of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act which allows a council to require a monetary contribution for certain works. Uh, uh, the authority to require that contribution is contained in a contributions plan which council is required to um, exhibit, receive and consider submissions and formally adopt. Council has done so 2015 for rural roads a contributions plan requires the scope of works to which the contribution is to be applied um, to be stated in the plan uh, and the plan does list um, specific roads to which the rural roads 711 contribution will be applied. It does not uh, necessarily be in the geographic distance from particular property who has paid a contribution uh, and it does not include crown roads as part of the scope of works. Thank you, Mr. Director. Any further response? Uh, oh, I'll just to add, I suppose, to confirm, uh, certainly the, the plan or the contributions plan does not include assets that we don't own. Uh, so it's uh, the, the road itself, the Crown Road, beside the property and the community facility to the rear is uh, both owned by the Crown. Uh, dare I say that's a shame that the Crown don't make a contribution to manage their own assets. Thank you, Mr. Director. Any further discussion? Yes, go, Councillor Burke. That is a shame. Um, and I guess that the council, does the Crown manage the ground at the end of the road? Mr. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, as I understand, there's a, a trustee that manages that on behalf of the Crown. Uh, so their activities on managing that uh, is certainly not uh, well known to council. 
um, but it's not managed by the council itself. Thank you, Mr. Director. Any further discussion? Councillor Orman. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, to the Director, minimum standard for a rural residential roadway, which is, as I understand, it's um, gravel road now, 10.5 metres wide formation, 8.5 metre wide, two coat bitumen seal. So that's uh, estimated $100,000. Could this road, or does it have to be sealed to be up to a, to a standard? Can it be just left as a gravel road and perhaps graded at times of the year that, that uh, when equipment's in that area? Um, it just seems a shame that, I know there's people who use it, but also that there's a campground at the end that would bring, obviously, um, money into the district. So it'd be nice to see if something could be done. Yes, Mr. Director. Through Mr. Mayor, in other locations, certainly within other villages, or more villages, including Wattle Flat, yes, we have accepted uh, Cran Roads uh, into Council's ownership at a lesser standard. Uh, so a number of sealed roads in the villages might only have a five metre seal, for instance, and we have accepted those. Uh, the matters at hand would be that the a lot of Cran Roads aren't really formed in any real manner. Uh, limited pavement uh, depth, limited gravel, typically no drainage. Uh, so for council to take that ownership on, we would need to consider those factors because then council would also be responsible for the stormwater drainage along that road uh, and the ongoing maintenance and trafficability. Uh, also in a number of situations, Crown Roads actually aren't uh, within the area uh, to which their proper paper boundaries apply. Uh, so there certainly uh, in other areas can be a precedent uh, for, uh, uh, for works that may need to be done to bring that road back into its proper location or bury the paper legal defined location of the, the road, which legals can cost a considerable amount of money for that to occur. So it's a matter of council to consider how that would be funded uh, along with uh, any maintenance that we we, uh, we would need to do on, say, in this particular case, uh, noting that we have an asset backlog on our assets uh, in terms of our rural and urban roads of over $20 million, so we can't afford to pay for our own roads to be maintained. Thank you, Mr. Director. Councillor Fry, oh, sorry. Councillor Sorry, Lord. just one more question on that, on that note. Um, and I get what you're saying, setting a precedent, but can these things be taken on a case-by-case -case basis instead of grouping every every Crown Road together? Mr. Director. Uh, through Mr. Mayor, uh, yes they can. Every Crown Road that's requested for transfer to, uh, to Council uh, is reported to Council for Council's consideration. Uh, staff, offers, uh, staff officers cannot make that determination, so yes, you have the opportunity to make a, uh, a decision on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you, Mr. Director. Councillor Fry. Thanks, and um, just wondering from the director, um, where would he see the best the best source of money for this in the budget if we were to approve it to be taken on? Three, Mr. Mayor. Really, that's a matter for your councillor to determine. Uh, it would be uh, if if it was to occur, uh, then there would be a road uh, budget or a road item elsewhere in terms of either maintenance or capital works that would have to be trimmed, which means less maintenance elsewhere on our network. Thank you, Mr. Director. Yes, Councillor Price. If um, Councillor Burke would be so kind to accept an amendment, I'd like to propose that um, we add a point to, to make representation to Crown Lands Department, urging them to assess and apply funding and remediation works to all Crown Roads in the Bathurst LGA um, with a sense of urgency. If you accept that amendment, Councillor. Councillor Burke. Yes. Yes. Any further discussion? Councillor, now put the motion. Those four. Oh, amendment, sorry. Sorry. Mr. You Mayor, won't need to treat it as an amendment because the mover and the seconder have both agreed to it, so we'll just treat it as the original motion. 
what I have, Mr Mayor, yes. is that uh, one council does not take over ownership of the Crown Road adjacent to 3725 Safala Road, Wattle Flat, and Councillor Fry, I believe the second part is, make representation to Crown Lands Department for them to assess and provide funding for Crown Roads in the local government area. That was amendment. Councillor Booth. Yes? Question you can. Um, and will you guys report back to us and will this particular road come back to us if, uh, will this come back to the council after those investigations? Yeah. Through you, Mr Mayor, if the Crown determines to provide funding, then it would be a matter for the Crown to work out how the works are to be undertaken. Uh, it wouldn't be the council. They may contract us to do the works. But if they disagree, uh, it would not be my intention to bring this report back to the council because our current position is, unless the council uh, makes an adoption into its changed position, that we don't take over Crown Roads because we don't have the sufficient funds. We have a significant backlog and every dollar you put into the Crown Roads, and I understand the problems that the, uh, you know, the people out there are experiencing, but we do that then we take it out of our own roads, and at the moment, uh, you've all seen the condition of those those roads. So, no, we wouldn't come back at this stage. Thank you, Mr. General Manager. Yes, Council Organ. And um, if um, the proposer of the amendment, I don't know whether um, Crown Lands would Crown would look at this and just go all of the roads. You got to be kidding. Why don't we just focus on these two that we've got in the report and um, see if they'll come to the party with those two? Councillor Fry, do you want to...? Yeah, it's um, a good point. Let's refine that amendment, if we can, to refer directly to 3725 Safala Road, Wattle Flat, but also, and we're, we're diverging a little off this particular one, um, having already dealt with the other, but 4087 Safala Road, Wattle Flat. Um, I think Councillor Organ's right, being more specific. Uh, as a case-by-case -case, uh, basis, I think we'd have better luck specifying two particular roads than going the whole LGA, although I know the conditions of a lot of the Crown Roads in the LGA are, are bad. So, Councillor Burke would accept that amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fry. Mr Jim. Yep. So, Mr Mayor, I've got... The Council 1 does not take over ownership of the Crown Road adjacent to 3725 Safala Road, Wattle Flat, and 2 make representations to Crown Lands Department for them to assess and provide funding for the Crown Roads in the local government area at 3725 Safala Road and 4087 Safala Road at Wattle Flat. Thank you, Mr Jim. Heard the amendment. We now put the motion. With no further discussion. No, we now put the motion. Those four. Against, carry. Move to item 8.3.3, water restrictions. Councillors can have a move in a second. Councillor Fry, Councillor Hogan. Councillors, any discussion? Councillor Hogan. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm delighted to see in this report that work has commenced on reviewing the 2014 drought management plan. Um, the most recent drought gave us an extraordinary opportunity to analyse the system and most particularly how Benchifley Chif Dam worked when the river flows failed to meet the Bathurst Town water demand. So I look forward to seeing that analysis. Um, Benchifley Dam works as our backup bucket. It's like a battery. And when the river fails or diminishes, we turn it on. So for 19 weeks, we were totally reliant on the dam. During that 19-week period, the dam dropped... 5,400 megalitres, but only 1,500 megalitres, that's 28%, only 28% was delivered to Bathurst. 72% was lost to evaporation, seepage, river losses, and a proportion went to irrigators. At present, the catchment is full and the water table saturated, and that impacts on the following year. So we're in a good position. So I just wanted to make the point that in making this decision tonight to potentially introduce level one water smart actions, I want to stress that we are acutely aware of how quickly things can change and we will not be taking our eye off the ball when it comes to water. Thank you, Councillor Hogan. 
Yes, Councillor Hawkman. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Could I just say um, congratulations. I did bring a notice of motion into um, the Chamber November 2021, I think, to drop water restrictions, and I'm happy to say that even to this day, the dam has remained over 100% full, so it should have been done back then, but anyway, it's getting done. Thank you, Councillor Hawkman. Any further discussion? Councillor Booth. Um, I'm hoping that, I guess, I, it has stayed at 100%, but I'm hoping that this isn't water smart. I feel as though it's basic common sense around water usage. And one of the biggest changes that I think our community in Bathurst needed was that it is not a replace, it's not an easily replaceable um, resource that we have. And hopefully some pretty harsh, you know, restrictions for quite some time has made people realise that, yeah, as the, the councillor said, um, Things can get bad really quickly, and hopefully we've done a little bit in curbing the the way we treat our water in our small town. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Fry. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I honestly believe that the, our level two A water restrictions are best practice and, and common sense uh, in a town like Bathurst. In a city like Bathurst, it relies on on that water source. Um, I feel like we need to get people and have gotten people into uh, a smart way of using water from that 2A and I would like uh, uh, the framework that we have with re water restrictions to change and to shift that 2A down to 1. Um, in the meantime, um, I, I can't support going back down to level 1 um, just because I feel like 2A should be the base level currently. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Fry. Thank you. Yes, Councillor North. I guess as a council that's come, seen a couple of droughts go through our time, one of the best things I saw what this council does and what happened last time was a simple thing called odds and evens. You do not need to water your yard every yard, every day. You do not need to do it in the middle of the day. And you know, Council Fry, I agree with you. I don't think it's best practice. I understand what Council Orban, I remember he was very passionate about it. But this city um, survived for one reason, it's people. They listen. And they did it. And people have had wonderful gardens. Those gardens have come back. Their lawns have come back. Um, and the odds and evens is a basic, basic thing. They, oh, I just can't understand why we can't have within the framework that it's odds and evens. Because we're basically just saying, you're right to go. We, we entrust you to do the right thing. And they did do the right thing. But I'm already seeing people now, and have been for a while, watering in the middle of the day. I'm sorry. There's some people that just don't give a damn. But I think if it's clear that, you know, you've done the right thing, and I think we should acknowledge people for that, so for that reason I will support it. But I would ask that we strongly talk about, for people, please think about odds and evens. We're giving you um, that wonderful resource, but it's not a finite resource. We saw how it changed really quickly. And if anything down the track, if our good old council... Oberon decided to want to do something with Fish River. We're in trouble. We're in major trouble. The issues with our other dam um, that we still have got to go through, I just think that I would encourage that if we do go down, and, and I understand why, strongly put the message, strongly put the message out. Do it odds and evens. You do not need to do it every day. You do not. And that's how we got through, because people work smart. If you want to be smart, Let's be smart and say, look, we encourage you on and even. Just say, we hope you do the right things. Have a look at your number on the front of the house and follow that. It's pretty simple. Thank you, Councillor North. Councillor Jennings. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, there is one critical difference in the decision we're making tonight from the other times we've made it, and that is in the uh, page 53, uh, where it says water security projects, and that... Uh, the stormwater harvesting project is anticipated to be operational by the end of 2023. To me, that is the safety net, which we didn't have before. Mm. Uh, I also note that I believe today the Bureau of Meteorology mis um, put out an announcement saying that the El Nino watch status has been identified. And uh, as a result, that means, you know, that's actually a very um, concerning announcement because um, it's a very quick transformation from La Nina to uh, El Nino. And I don't have any concerns that we're going to get through winter. Obviously, we will. Dams at 100%. Uh, it'd probably be, even if it's uh, below average rainfall, we'd still um, do okay. 
uh, and then we've got the stormwater harvesting through the coming summer. So that is actually the safety net that uh, certainly um, gives me um, hope that we can go with, I'm oh, happy to support this uh, motion as it stands. Uh, and um, let's uh, look forward to seeing that stormwater harvesting project uh, reaping some good rewards and some solid data. Okay, thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Hogan. Just a question through you, Mr Mayor, to the Director of Engineering. Um, as part of that drought management plan, will we be revisiting our restriction levels? Mr Director. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, yes. Uh, that's the fundamental uh, component of the drought management plan as to how the go-into restriction should be handled. Uh, so yes, that will occur, but it will take some time to work through because we certainly had a lot to learn on the last drought in terms of uh, appropriate trigger points, which we've never had to do it, uh, deal with before. Uh, and uh, that will form part of the updated draft management plan, which will be subject to a number of working parties before we get to a report to the council to adopt. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Orban. Just a question for the director. In the last drought, I know water was dropping at a level, if you go out in the middle, watch it go down. Um, 5%, so from, let's say from 85% fall to 80% fall in a drought condition, how long does that take to go? To get from 85 down to 80? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, with unrestricted demand, uh, the greatest drop that we've seen in the dam since it has been uh, had the wall raised was a little over four percent in a week. Uh, with restrictions in place during the last drought, typically we would see two to two and a half percent drop a week without any windfalls. So, in other words, two weeks. Two weeks. Thank you, Mr. Director. Any further discussion? Oh, sorry, Council. All in my calculations here. Thank you. Um, just in saying that. Is, is it um, B, should Chifley Dam level fall to 80% revert to level 3 high water restriction? Should we be looking at 85 perhaps, just as a word say a safety net? Or are you happy to keep it at 80, Mr Director? Mr Director, on you. Through you, Mr Mayor, uh, when Council considered 2A, uh, the recommendation was 75%. Council increased that to 80% uh, as the resolution. It's a matter for the Council whether they think 85 is better. I'm OK with 80%. 80 uh, and look, it's something that we'll continue to monitor very closely, as we've done in the last number of years, uh, with regard to water uh, consumption and, and inflows and the like. Uh, and uh, certainly there'll be a further report come back to Council prior to summer uh, as to uh, potential restrictions into the into the summer period if uh, if needed. Thank you, Mr. Yep, Councillor Owen. So would you be happier if we had that trigger point at 85% and would everyone, <laughs> and would everyone be in, in this room be happy with that? I, I just feel I'm, I'm happy with going less restrictions, but... I just, I just feel the director is very nervous up here about 80%. That's it. Uh, no, I'm not nervous. Uh, I'm comfortable right. with 80%. Okay. Councillor, all good. Thank you, Mr. Director. Yes, Councillor, uh, Councillor Fry. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Mayor. The, um, to Councillor Jennings' point, the question for the director is: um, You believe our pipeline project is on time? Um, it says it'll be delivery, delivered, operational by the end of this year. I'd be prepared to, oh. like, it makes a good Can't point. Surprise, is that a question? Yeah, it is. What's oh, a question, sorry. The question of what? It's coming. Did you? Oh, that's just still debating. You're listening, Mr. Mayor? Um, the, um, so the, the question is that, Thank because you. of, and the context is that Councillor Jennings has said that that can be our safety net. I'd be more willing to support this if you can guarantee us that's online and operational by the end of 2023. <laughs> Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the current program that we have for uh, from the construction company uh, indicates that yes, it will be on, uh, will be delivered by that stage. Uh, however, I'll caution that uh, it is a big project. Uh, 
variations can happen. Uh, no one's got x-ray vision to see what's under the ground. Uh, there's only so much geotesting you can do. Uh, and uh, so I won't give a guarantee because I can't. Uh, all I can do is keep councillors informed uh, and uh, that will be a part of the report to council that we will have uh, prior summer in terms of progress with the water harvesting project. Thank you, Mr Director. Councillor Knoll. Question Director of Engineer, one of the big things at that time with the drought was when we had the discussion with the irrigators and one of the issues we had was they were given 100%. Is there any, how can we get to that state government authority? How do you do it? The question is to get them to understand and where the drought conditions, because I think we're an un unregulated river, they just said 100% to regulators, uh, to irrigators. How do we get on top of that? So. Yeah, that discussion in here for all the irrigators, that was not easy. And the job your staff did was wonderful. They got 20% of our 100. But the government just gave 100%. And we're, we're in drought conditions. How do we get on top of that? Yes, uh, through Mr Mayor, uh, yes, the Department of Planning, Industry and Environment does set the allocations for irrigators. Uh, and in the past, they've done so without consultation with council. Uh, and yes, granted 100%. Uh, to all of un, uh, unregulated rivers in New South Wales, which are essentially rivers above water New South Wales control dams. Uh, so in the Macquarie region, it's Macquarie River all the way to Burrendong Dam. Uh, so getting to your question, uh, we have asked for uh, to be involved in consultation with the department prior to them making that decision. That, sh uh, that's, uh, that decision is, is made uh, and advertised uh, for uh, essentially a financial year, but it's called the water year. Uh, we have asked for involvement in that decision uh, to have our say as to what we think that allocation might be. Thank you, Mr. Director. Any further discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion. Those four against carry. Move to item 8.3.4, water supply update. Councillor's going to have a move and a seconder. Councillor Fry, Councillor Hogan, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion. Those four against carry. Councillor, we now move to the Director of Cultural and Community Services report. Item 8.4.1, Bathurst Library Federal Government Funding for Trove. Councillor's going to have a move and a seconder. Councillor Jennings, Councillor Burt, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Jenny. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Only to say that I um, wholeheartedly fully support um, this uh, recommendation and uh, had it not been put forward by the Director, I was in touch with him, I would have been putting forward a notice of motion of a similar nature uh, that the Libraries Association is uh, keen to see, see go around the country. Uh, Trove is a phenomenal resource and um, at least keeping it free in public libraries is a bare minimum that we can expect, uh, should expect of any uh, federal government, so um, very supportive. Thank you, Councillor Jenny. Any further discussion? Councillors, I now put the motion. Those four against carry. Item 8.4.2, Local Government New South Wales Destination and Visitor Economy Conference. To the 29th to 31st of May 2023, Manly. Councillor can have a move and a second. Councillor Fry, Councillor Smith. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor. No, Councillor Fry, Councillor Jennings. Councillor Jennings, any other? Any further discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion. Those four against carry. Item 8.4.3 Destination Brand Implementation and Destination Management Plan Quarterly Report, March 2023. Councillor, can I have a move and a second? Councillor Fry, Councillor Smith, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion. Those four. Against, carry. Item 8.4.4, Bathurst Tourism Industry Engagement Framework Update, March 2023. Councillor, can I move in a second? Councillor Fry, Councillor Jennings. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Fry. 
Thanks, Mr. Mayor. And uh, look, things are moving quickly in the tourism space. Um, I've operated in the space for eight years myself and you'll find that Bathurst is going strength to strength and congratulations to the director for helping make that happen and his team down at the uh, BVIC as well. Um, so it all plays together. I just wonder if I can uh, suggest an amendment to councillors that um, after some public forum and outside uh, representation from community about a tourism reference group that uh, Council B explores the possibility of forming a tourism reference group. Thank you, Councillor Fromm. I wonder if Jennings would support that. Yep, support that, Councillor Jennings. Any further discussion? Councillor Jennings. Um, and further to that support, I guess I'm just um, uh, curious to know, I mean, um, the Tourism Reference Group had a bit of a, a good start and a sort of, sort of a sad, slow death, in my opinion. Um, but if there's enthusiasm and, um, you know, support for it through, from the community, then by all means, because uh, that was probably what was kind of lacking in the uh, original version. Uh, and it may be a catalyst for um, reforming our tourism sector, which I would love to see happen uh, on, on a few different levels. Could I ask the Director, um, is there uh, much more community support coming to you or to Council in addition to what we've heard today from the um, question time? Mr Director. Yeah, through you, Mr Mayor. Uh, there is. There's, there's uh, three or four more people I can think of in the industry that are enthusiastic to do more to contribute back into the industry. So I'll, I'll take on board the amendment to the report tonight and bring something back to Council on the terms of reference or, or, or some strategy of how we might implement that again. Thank you, Mr Director. Councillor Burke. Um, I just wanted to make a comment that, yeah, I'm in full support as well. It's amazing to actually have people from the community to come to us and say, hey, I want to do something for free. It's really great. So come back again. Bring your friends. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Burke. <laughs> uh, Councillor Hagen. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd, I'd had a call during the week from one of the members of the original tourism reference group in regards to this, who actually felt that the description in the... July 2020 attachment was not really an accurate representation of why the tourism group sort of folded. Um, the person I spoke to actually felt that there wasn't much effort from council um, that went into creating a new group at the tail end of it or advertising it or even consulting with the original um, tourism reference group members to help take it forward and I have to say that it's not the only person that I've heard that from over the years so it's I agree it's absolutely wonderful you know we had a we had a terrific night last night with the business chambers business art business after hours um, session there is an enthusiasm um, within the community and picking up on their desire to reconnect you know can I just reference the DMP because it actually says that a key objective of the DMP is to create deeper engagement with industry and the community and to facilitate partnerships to drive the development and delivery of, of collaborative and constructive destination management. And it should be recognised that successful implementation of this DMP cannot be achieved solely by Bathurst Regional Council but requires genuine cooperation across a broad stakeholder base. And one of those elements, um, it's, it's essential that there are partners that deliver on that promise. And one of those elements, as Ben mentioned, is a, a tourism reference group that meets a minimum of four times annually to advise council on best practice activities and industry requirements. So it's great that the tourism operators want to see this back in. I'm really happy to support the amendment, Councillor Fry. Can I, can I just add that if we do reignite this, it should have a very clear strategic purpose that is regularly challenged and revisited so that it remains relevant and effective, so that it just doesn't become getting together and having cups of tea. Thank you, Councillor Hagen. Any further discussion? Yes, we read out the amendment. Thanks. Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mayor, I have the motion as follows. The Council 1 note the implementation and future actions concerning tourism industry engagement and 2 explore the possibility of forming a tourism reference group. I'm Ms. Councillor Fry. All good. Yeah, Councillor Jenny. Thank you. No further discussion. I now put the motion. Those four against carry. Item 8.4.5, Reconnect Bathurst Project. Councillor, can I have a move and a seconder? 
Councillor Fry, Councillor Smith, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Burke. Um, I would just like to commend the Cogs Community Services team on this one. We met the reconnect people came to us at a working party and they were so engaged in this project it was amazing and anyone who hasn't actually had the opportunity to look at the storybook there's some really beautiful stories of people in Bathurst um, I just thought it was sad that there was the issue in the laneway with the posters that become a real eyesore really quickly um, I think that it put like a dampener so to say on this project and it wasn't appreciated for the amazing work that it was um, was there any kind was that just like a unfortunate thing that happened was the material not tested in weather it just sent I don't know it just was it was sad to see because it did look a bit derelict by the end Mr Director uh, you threw you Mr Barry it was sad the uh, there was some film on the concrete and the glue didn't adhere to it so on one side it didn't adhere well, but it remained on the other side and online. Thank you, Mr. Director. Hmm. Any further discussion? Reconnect. Any further discussion? I now put the motion, those four. Against, carried. Move the reports of other committees, item 9.1, traffic committee report. Council have a move and a seconder. Councillor Organ, Councillor Fry, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion, those four. Those four. Against, carried. We now move to notice of motion, item 10.1, Councillor Jennings, 2023 National General Assembly of Local Government. Councillors can have a move and a seconder. Councillor Jennings, Councillor Auburn. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Jennings. I'll, I'll open up, I guess. Right, um, yeah. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Uh, look, as, as uh, is clear from this um, notice of motion, and I appreciate that the recommendation um, in the report is to approve. Um, look, I think uh, the federal government is now, at this point in time, starting to find its feet. It's coming up to its first real budget that it can call its own. Um, it's um, a government that has um, quite a few members of which I know uh, and have personal professional contacts with and I think um, if I can be in any, of any service to our council it's to help build relations with that federal government particularly on a few of the issues and the projects that we'd like to progress in our vision for Bathurst including some that are mentioned there in terms of the bypass and road recovery support and um, regional health and as well as recognising our, our 2024 Frontier Wars event so um, I'll just leave it at that. I note that um, I'm more than happy to cover my own costs in terms of transport, food, accommodation, getting there, uh, given that it's not standard practice to send more than the Mayor and the General Manager. Thank you, Councillor Jennings. Councillor Hanger. Yeah. I'll just uh, have a question, probably to uh, Councillor Jennings. Uh, I totally approve 1234, so, but uh, I'm just questioning the... Um, just above number one, but not limited to um, where it says such as, but not limited to. Is that a bit open-ended or? Yeah, Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I would include that at the very first instance as the agenda of the conference itself that is presented, um, which uh, if you have a look at the draft program, you can get a pretty good idea of that. But uh, if you're bursting for a message to be sent down to Canberra, you just let me know before the <laughs> event, mate, and I'll take it down for you. You can't say anything. Just hoping yeah. they don't sort of move the Bathurst to be disbanded or something like that. Councillor Hanger, Councillor Friday, did you have a comment? Yeah, well, if we're giving messages... Sorry, Councillor Jim. If we're giving um, messages in years' time, not to forget about regional New South Wales, that'd be good. Thanks, mate. Thank you, Councillor Fry. Any further discussion? Councillor, I'll now put the motion. Those four against carry. Item 10.2, Councillor Burke, Hogan, Jennings, investigate free hygiene products for women. Councillor's going to have a move and a seconder. Councillor Hogan, Councillor Jennings. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Burke. Are you happy for me to open? Um, just quickly, I think it's a bit of a 
to my brain on this little bit of you know our fitness session on this day of last week. Um, there was a survey commissioned by the Period Poverty Ch Charity called Share the Dignity, and it said that more than one in five Australians Australians were using toilet paper, socks, and other alternatives as they couldn't access sanitary products. The cost of living is astronomical at the moment. Families like myself, we have three daughters and a, a person, you know, four females in the home. Um, the, <laughs> what an absolute pleasure. Um, so hopefully we can get these machines in places like our libraries, art galleries, the pool. Um, it's just a basic human right that with on top of the current cost of living is just, you know, something that council can do just out there recognising the rights of women. Thank you, Councillor Moog. Any further discussion? Councillor Hagen. Um, I know that among the many issues that council's faced, council faces, this is a relatively small one in some ways, but following on from last week's International Women's Day with its theme of embracing equity, I think it's worth investigating. Council isn't always about the big things. Uh, we have a role to play in keeping an eye on the more vulnerable members of our community and I'm very happy to put my name to this one. Thank you, Councillor Hogan. Councillor North. <coughs> Can I just ask a question on investigation? We've got some wonderful women's um, health organisations in town, Headspace, um, Veritas House, that we have discussions with them about this process and what they do because I guess their resources and their support the people in the community, um, they're well trained and I would like organisations like that involved in this process because I think make sure we do it right and get put in the right places. Thanks Councillor North. Councillor Jennings. Thanks Mr Mayor. I'd uh, add to Councillor North's um, comments there that uh, it may be worth inquiring uh, if, if uh, some conversations are held with the Inner West Council who did this that um, ask them who they consulted with in, in terms of um, women's health networks and the like. Um, and overall, I mean, we're just asking for an investigation at this stage and some options to be put to council in terms of the, the pros and cons and what it potentially obviously would cost in dollars and or resources. But the overarching uh, item, which is kind of unbelievable that we're, you know, 2023, uh, and there's only one other council it would seem in Australia, or maybe there's others we don't know of, but they'd be pretty new, that do offer this service. Um, the simple proposition is make public toilets equal for women's needs. They're not at the moment, uh, based on biophysical, um, you know, uh, bodily uh, functions. So um, let's look at that and see what we can do. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Jennings. Any further discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion. Those four against carried. Move to item 10.3, Council Organ Budget Reallocation. Councillors can have a move and a seconder. Councillor Burke, Councillor Auburn. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Auburn. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, since the last time that I brought this to the Chamber, I know I've got at least two votes on on the positive. Uh, Councillor Fry on the 10th of January on 2BS with Jack Underwood, uh, the comment was, there's no bells and whistles from me in this year's budget, just want to fix our roads. Here's the way to do it. Beautiful. Councillor Jennings, last time I brought this to the Chamber, he said we were jumping the gun and should wait for the State Government funding. 2.4 million we received. Great, fantastic, not enough. So that's why I'm going back to the table with this one. I mean, I have a list of roads that I drive over every single day, and it's not potholes. It is not potholes. This is roads that are crumbling, falling apart, and I'll ask the director, the likes of Lime Kilns Road between Kelso and the Sheep and Cattle Ground. I'll say um, Durham Street from basically from the highway to Edgels. Um, I'll say Howick Street, I think we've got funding for that, from Rankin to Bentick Street, which is cracking up and falling apart. Do we have the funds to fix all those roads? Plus, uh, let's say the Lagoon Road as well. And if, if we haven't got the funds, when are these roads going to be fixed? Mr Director. 
through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, as part of that uh, funding that you've identified in terms of the state funds, uh, projects that uh, staff wish to proceed with will be uh, Woodburn Road from uh, O'Connell Road to essentially the dam gate at the shipping dam. Uh, we'll also look to do some work on Woodburn, uh, on Lachlan Road for your funds, uh, which is currently speed limited to 40 k's an hour, given its condition. Uh, also, asphalted concrete between uh, George Street in Howard Street to Benhook Street, so the two blocks of the CBD, uh, and also some stabilisation work between or from uh, essentially Mitre Street down near the hospital in a section on Durham Street uh, as far as we can get towards uh, Esling Street. Uh, but all up we're only talking a couple of kilometres worth of roads uh, that that will, that will deal with. Uh, so uh, yes, there's certainly a number of other roads about that, um, uh, that are of concern. Coral Track for instance, uh, any, any number of rural roads, any number of urban roads. Thank Tell you Mr. Fun. Thank you. And the question yeah, was, um, when are we going to have funding to fix those roads if we don't use this? Mr. Director. Through Mr. Mayor, subject to, uh, to federal or state grants, which uh, they're not coming in quick enough. Uh, what we've got is certainly grateful to receive. Uh, with regard to council funds, that's a matter for council to determine its priorities. I'll spend what I've got. Thank you, Mr. Director. Uh, yeah, Mr. Radio. So, in regards to state government grants, I can see us. I mean, we don't know the results of what's going to be the result of the state election, but if it changes the guard, um, I would see Bathurst not in a real good position to receive state government funding. But um, from there on, so I am very, very, very doubtful whether we're ever going to see these roads fixed and I would love to get this money which you know where do we actually stand what what do we really want to achieve as a council do we do we want to put an extension on a grandstand or do we want to fix our roads that people use every day not a grandstand that gets used sporadically and you know big time once a year we can put that off for 12 months, surely. Let's get our minds focused on fixing our roads because that's where we really need to focus. Get back to the basics, cut the bells and whistles, don't worry about the Rolls Royces for the directors, just let's get into fixing our roads and give them something to drive on. <laughs> well, Sledgehammer spoke. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, I... I I have got a list of roads and, and it's not rural roads, it's all internal roads that, um, that I've got a list of and, and trust me, I can go now Gilmore Street, 11 mile drive, um, Piper Street below Stewart, Howard Street below Stewart, um, Braverdeen Road coming off Eglinton Road is, is that ripply, it nearly throws to the other side of the road when you go up there in the wet. All these roads need fixing and we have not got the money, it's not in the next year's budget either. We won't get the money out of that to fix these roads. We need to go now. Thank you, Councillor Orban. Thank you. Councillor Burke first, ladies. Um, thanks, you're passionate. Um, and just on the back of speaking about things on the radio, after the last motion come up, Councillor Orban did mention that nobody else in the chamber cared about the roads, and that is an incorrect statement, because I care. And, um, I just am not sure whether this is like a bit of a Rob Peter to pay Paul situation going, is it, I guess I have a question, is it good governance to just take a pot of money from one little area and put the, that money into another pot in the form of a motion on the floor without a, a really thought out discussion as a council? Yeah, it looks like I'm the one answering it. Um, it's not what you call normal practice, but the matter has been before the council. Uh, there's been extensive uh, reports on it. Uh, 2021, I think, was the last time, or 
yeah, 2021, I think it was, when the report came for the council to adopt the option, and the option adopted was B. It's been included in the CSP development, and it's been included in the management plan developments. Uh, but in saying that, from Council Alban's position, it would be a case of it has gone through a number of processes that he doesn't agree with the position. He's not against the development. He's not in agreement with the timing of the development. Uh, and so the only way he's going to get it back on the agenda is to um, put a notice of motion up because certainly from a council staff point of view, we've had the reports and we've got the council's adopted position, which is in the CSP and also in the uh, annual operating plan. So we will operate with that. There would be no other trigger for us to come back to the council. Thank you, General Manager. Councillor Burt, uh, Councillor Fry. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my question is to the Director of Engineering Services. Um, how are we going rolling out that money we got from the state government for potholes? Yes, sir, Director. Uh, in terms, or through Mr Mayor, uh, the first round of funding we got, uh, I can't remember the exact dollars, but it was uh, around about the, uh, yeah, that was about that sort of money. Uh, we've actually got two pot oil crews at the moment uh, utilising that uh, that funding uh, before we're attacking our own uh, finance uh, to uh, get that money uh, equipment as quickly as we can. Uh, the second round of funding in terms of the 2.4, uh, deeds have only just uh, just been sorted, uh, and so we'll look to, and we've already commenced discussions with uh, contractors. Uh, there'll be two types of contractors. One will be asphalt and concrete, and the other will be uh, uh, heavy patching by way of stabilising. Uh, those discussions have already commenced about timings. Uh, it's fair to say that both of those uh, road contractors are under extreme pressure in other areas too. Thank you, Mr Director. Thanks, um, yes, Mr. Director. I've got a Director of Corporate Finance Services question about um, the practice or policy around using loan funding for minor repairs on roads and potholes. Yes, Director. Uh, through Mr. Mayor, uh, I guess uh, the obvious response is that it's not wise to take out loan funds uh, to fund maintenance or recurring expenditure items. Thank you, Mr. Director. Councillor Noel. No worries, thank you. Um, it's not the norm, it's not the given, but if we keep doing the same way, the same things all the same time, where are we going to go? We know where we are from the past to where we are in the future because we change. We modify, we look at doing things differently. To get the correction there, I rang Councillor Auburn there when that notice of motion was brought up. I brought it up originally and I went to Councillor Auburn and I said, Mate, we've got to do something about this. We've been in council for a while. We've spoken about it. Um, there's a resource there. We're not against it. Never been against the grandstand. But here's a chance to make some major inroads. And I commend Council Auburn for bringing this up again. Um, as I said, I brought it up last time. You know, these sort of things were said. Is it common practice? Is it normal? The last thing that was got brought up, it sounds like we'll be the second one in Australia that has ever done it. If you don't change, if you don't change your practices, if you don't look at other ways of doing it, how are you going to do it? If we've got 100 million in uh, outstanding infrastructure that we need to improve, do we change our practice? Do we change the level of that road? We want it, no, nah, it doesn't have to be that good, we're going to make it this good. I asked at that last notice of motion to have a look at it and got knocked again, a re-sealing program. Anyone looked around town, the number of roads that we redid that were in good condition. Maybe they can be put back a couple of years and we fix some of those other areas. Yeah, the bigger picture is we need to look and be smarter and wiser how we use it. Is it normal? No. Is it something we could use at the moment and make a massive improvement? Um, yes, we could. It's not normal practice, but it's not wrong. It's not illegal, it can be done. Now, you, Councillor Auburn, you've got um, Councillor Jennings next year. If he's a change of government, he's well connected. I think we'll, hopefully we can throw him in the deep end with some of the, the state politicians. But the thing is that I've never been in a chamber where the councillors don't give up. We've got to keep trying. We've got to keep looking for ways to improve things. And I recommend that your previous notice of motion. We've got to look at what our business is about, what we do it, and how we do it. 
So have a think about this. It might be only done once, but here's a chance. We've got 2.4 million. We got about 458,000 on the first lot, so say around 3 million. We could put nearly $8 million into fixing roads. Not many councils out there could say they could do that. Think outside square sometimes. You know, if we want to be bigger, we in well, not bigger, if we want to be better in our practices, we've got to look at our practices all the time. And this council, you know, there's a lot of questions being asked, there's a lot of working party going on. You know, how can we do things better? How can we look at this better? That's great. But if we don't change, what's the point of doing it? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Noel. Yes, Councillor Jennings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, a few things. Um, firstly, I guess I just want to commend Councillor Auburn for bringing this back again, so similar to the previous one. Uh, I've been in that position myself a few times, and sometimes you wonder why you're doing it, but uh, good on you for having another crack against the odds as well, I might add, it would seem. Um, so, a few things. Um, yes, there's a state election next weekend. Um, this uh, motion being brought a second time does serves one extremely valuable uh, purpose and that is to help stimulate the bidding war that is going on between the state Labor opposition and the government currently. What this shows to any candidate who's watching is that this council is so worried about its roads it's willing to consider cannibalising its own local very good projects. For me, the Carrington Park one is not one that I can come bring myself to uh, take away from. I think we need to, we probably have the best uh, facility in the Central West, but we need to make it bigger and better. It has around 32,000 users in an 11 month period as it is, and I would only like to see that grow and have community events on top of that. Putting that aside, let's just look at the raw figures for a moment. Now I'm guessing, Councillor Auburn, maybe you didn't get the memo from the uh, state opposition that they're doing an announcement tomorrow on their regional funding package. Now when that comes out, with any luck, the coalition will match it or try and outdo them in some way. But that proposition is for an emergency road repair fund and they're basically using the same method as that uh, 50 million and the 280 million to add another 390 million on top of the 280 million just for regional roads. So I appreciate the uh, scepticism, but there's a bigger commitment already uh, on the table if there was a change. Now, based on those figures of 400,000 from 50 million and 2.4 million out of the 280 million, that gives us roughly a formula of about 0.008% uh, is what we get out of that. So if that was applied to the 390 million, we'd be looking at around about 3.3 million on top of the 400,000 and on top of the 2.4 million. So it's excellent that you've brought this to the table because it highlights, as it's been highlighted in regional councils all over New South Wales, we've had a look at a few and some of the community meetings that are going on, particularly up around the Hunter Valley, Dunglog area, they're absolutely going berserk on road maintenance as well. That brings me to the other source of funding, though, is, uh, and it touches on possibly what uh, Councillor Hanger was um, asking about before in terms of the ALGA conference. The biggest single ask by ALGA of the federal government this year is to bring back the financial assistance grants to be one full percentage point of um, taxation revenue, which is big. It's currently sitting at 0.52 of 1%. So you're really putting that's $2.9 billion, let's call it $3 billion. You're talking about doubling the financial assistance grants to $3 billion. On top of that, there's some lesser um, projects, and I appreciate that's over 537 LGAs across Australia, but they're also looking to secure uh, commitments on the local roads and community infrastructure program. We've had over a million dollars in that in the past um, to make it $500 million a year plus being indexed increase the roads to recovery funding to 800 million per year, 300 million per year for strategic local roads programs to address congestion um, and first and last mile issues. And then also, this one's probably partially relevant, 250 million for four years for a new regional infrastructure recovery program. You put all those together and you're talking about, do you wanna, oh that's one minute, I'll get there. 
Um, that you put all those figures together, and what Alga is seeking is around about um, three point eight five billion dollars worth of funding, which is a significantly larger amount than what we've been used to over the last decade. Putting that into per average, on average, per council, just divide that 3.85 by 537 LGAs, you get $7.1 million on average. I think I was vindicated on my comments the last time, saying that it was too early, it was premature to act on this, and that more money would be coming. We got an additional $2.4 million. Just hold your breath for another week or so and see what happens during the uh, course of this election campaign. Well, <laughs> if you want to give it a crack, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> I don't know how, but let's just see how we go, both, yeah. both state and federal um, perspective. So um, uh, that's my position on it, and um, you know, fingers crossed, let's see what happens. Thanks, Councillor Jennings. Reply. Yes, all. Uh, sorry, Councillor Hanger first. Yeah, um, as much as I'd like to support it, I can't, and I concur with everything that Councillor Jennings said, and uh, I think it was Councillor Burke said, robbing Peter to pay Paul. Uh, I just cannot countenance that. I really can. We've got this fund set aside. Let's work with that, and let's hear what uh, happens in the future uh, to, uh, you know cannibalise, that word has been used to one of the funds that we've got for uh, a project that we've got plans in the pipeline. I cannot uh, cannot come to that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hanger. Council. Political promises we are going to lean on, are we? Political promises. I remember one uh, who's Prime Minister now, Mr Albanese, telling me I was going to get 285 bucks from the power bill this year. Well, I haven't got it yet, so it doesn't matter how much it is, but he's not giving it out. Um, you know, how, how much do we, actually, do we actually rest on political promises at an election? I'd say about that. Um, they all, and I mean, you know, now we've got the federal government spending, what, 270 billion on three submarines, so there goes that money. Um, I honestly, one word, priorities. I mean, you ask anybody, any of your constituents, what's the main thing that you want us to do as a council? Fix our bloody roads, full stop. That's all they say, fix our roads. And, you know, I mean, it sounds a little bit redneck, but the three R's. The roads, rubbish and rates. I mean, we really need to get back to some basics and, and look at things like this. I mean, um, right, yeah, that's, that's, well, that's, well, that's rubbish. So, uh, right, eh? But um, honestly, it's, it's just, I look at this, and yes, I am passionate about this subject because I drive on these things every day and um, I get people in my ear every day about the roads in Bathurst. So um, this was a way that I could see us get our roads back on track. But um, I'll leave it at that. It's up to you guys. But um, and I won't go saying you don't care about the roads on the radio, but watch this. <laughs> watch this space. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Alban. No further discussion? Yes, Councillor Jennings. Just, just to make one further point that is uh, essential about all those financial figures that I've put is yeah, that we've closed the debate. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yes, you can. Can't can't the debate's been closed. Can't ask questions or debate. Thank you. We're now going to put the motion. Those in favour? Oh, sorry. Oh, it's those in favour. Put the Against? It's lost. Now we move to Council's delegated report, item 11.1, Minutes Bathurst Regional Youth Council, 7th of February 2023. Councillor can I move in a second? Councillor Fry, Councillor Hogan, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, now put the motion, those four. Against? Carry. Item 11.2, Minutes Council's meeting with community groups, representatives 8th of February 2023. Council can have a move and a seconder. Council Burke, Council Smith, Council can have any discussion. 
Councillor now put the motion. Those four. Against, carry. Item 11.3, Minutes Bathurst Community Safety Committee, 11th, 9th of February 2023. Councillors can have a move and a seconder. Councillor Fry, Councillor Smith, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor now put the motion. Those four. Against, carry. Item 11.4, Minutes Councillors Meeting with Community Groups, Representatives, 22nd of February 2023. Councillors can have a move and a seconder. Councillor Jennings, Councillor Burke, Councillor, any discussion? <laughs> Councillor, I now put the motion. Those four. Against, carry. Item 11.5. Minutes, councillors meeting with community groups, representatives 1st of March 2023. Councillor, can I move in a seconder? Councillor Hogan, Councillor Hanger. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion. Those four. Against, carried. We now re, uh, resolve into confidential committee as a whole to deal with confidential reports. Uh, can I move in a seconder? Councillor Orban, Councillor Burke, before we move, can, uh, Mr. GM. Have we got a. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, could I just advise that uh, item number two of the Director of Environmental uh, Services. Uh, sorry, in Engineering Services Confidential Report concerning the design maintenance of a biogas collection system at the Waste Management Centre will be withdrawn. Thank you, Mr GM. Members of the public are invited to make submissions on whether the matter should or should not be dealt with in confidential committee. Councillor, is there any... Oh, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, now put the motion, those four. Against, carried. See, can we cease recording council meeting, please? Call the break.
Councillor Smith, I'll read the year one last so you'll have to get out and read it. Mr Smith, Council, uh, Mr Mayor, <laughs> Council has just met in confidential session and the following items have been referred through. Uh, Director of Corporate Services and Finances report, 12.1.1 uh, Rural Licence Agreement, Lot 6 DP 1142438, Lot 6 Church Lane, Kelso. Uh, the Council approves entering into a Rural Licence Agreement for Lot 6 DP 1142438, Lot 6 Church Lane, Kelso, as detailed on the report. Report 12.1.2 Communications Licence Agreement, Lot 1 DP 534118, Pitt Strait, Mount Panorama. The Council approves entering into a new Communications Licence Agreement for Lot 1 DP 534118, Pitt Strait, Mount Panorama, with four consecutive five-year licences as detailed in the report. Report number 12.1.3, Sporting Crown Licence Agreement, Lot 7003, DP 1028774, Brian Booth Recreational Ground, Purfil. The Council approves entering into a new non-exclusive Crown Licence Agreement for Lot 7003, DP 1028774, Brian Booth Recreational Ground, Purfil, for a period of 12 months as detailed in the report. Uh, item 12.1.3. Five, extension of financial support period that Council act in accordance with the recommendations as detailed within the report. Then the Director of Engineering Services reports 12.2.1 Tender 3607-88 Design and Construction of the Stony Creek Bridge, Gamoa. Uh, the Council accepts the tender for the design and construction of Stony Creek Bridge from Murray Constructions Proprietary Limited in the amount of 935560 $566.50, including GST, subject to provisional items and variations. Item 12.2.2, tender 360808, design, construction and maintenance of biogas collection system at Bathurst Waste Management Centre. I would note that that matter was withdrawn and was advised prior to going into confidential session. Uh, so those items are there for the uh, Council to adopt. And then the last item I'll bring up, uh, once Councillor Smith, who declared the interest, leaves the room. Declared the interest, mate. Yes, um, non significant, um, non pecuniary. Bathurst Golf Club is a customer of my employer, of which I conduct monthly visits, and I will leave the chamber. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Smith, you stay for the first resolution, which is to adopt the items that I've read out already, because I'll have to read out that other item in a second. Okay, we now adopt the report of the committee as a whole. Can I have a move and a second? Councillor North, Councillor Jennings. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, now put the motion. Those four against? Carried. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Mr Mayor, Council, um, in part of its uh, deliberations in confidential... Excuse me, could, could you open the door? Uh, met in confidential session and considered the Director of uh, Corporate Services and Finances Report 12.1.4, Request for Water Charges Adjustment, Bathurst Golf Club, the recommendation is the council act in accordance with the recommendations as detailed within the report. Council, have a move and a second. Council North, Councillor Burr, Council any discussion? Council now put the motion, those four. Against, carried. Councillors, I declare the meeting closed at 8.45. Can we make sure the recording's turned off, please, Nick? <laughs>